أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعن الدائم الأمدي السرمدي على أعدائهم أجمعين مدى الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أمين رب العالمين we begin the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. All praises be to Him, everlasting and omniscient He is. And we send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household and our everlasting damnation and curses upon their enemies. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. And once again, we congratulate Sahab al-Asr wa-Zaman, arwahuna lahu al-Fida, and Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar on the auspicious occasion that marks the birth of Fatima al-Zahra. Alayha afdalu salati wa atamma salam And insha'Allah we will be continuing from our last two episodes In which we were discussing the importance of seeking the most appropriate And most pleasant and beautiful name for one's children And once again before we continue and expand upon the last narrations that we discussed A disclaimer that when I am speaking about the names of children I am speaking about those who are naming their children, their newborn children, so the new parents and new mothers. In no way am I discriminating those who, for example, came into the religion of Islam later on into their life. On, on the, uh, for those people who, who sought Islam after or who became Muslim after, who were either reverts or converts in the religion, I actually say for them to keep their names because their names have a very big effect on the community that they're in and they're able to influence people more but our focus today and in the last these last episodes and these narrations as well is that for those people who decide to give their children un-islamic names for no apparent reason or because they are scared of what they call islamophobia or they're scared that their children will not fit in in the west well as we can see from the narrations that we had in hand that the names of Al Muhammad, and of course we haven't really discussed that yet, but the Prophet and the Imams have told us to choose the appropriate names for one's children. And the last narration that we did look at was the narration of Yaqub al Sarraj when he spoke to the young Imam al Kadhim alayhi salam when Imam al Kadhim was still in his crib and he told Yaqub al Sarraj to go change the name of his daughter that was recently born. And he had called his daughter Humaira, and then we know that Humaira is a name that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is angered with. And then he went, of course, and changed the, the name of his daughter. And from that narration, we concluded, or we're concluding right now, the importance of choosing that correct name for one's child, because we noticed that that name is a name. Of course, why is that name Humaira in the first place a name that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like because of course it's one of the, it's the, one of the names of those whom are considered an enemy of Al Muhammad especially the name Humaira who was the name of that individual who had a hand in murdering Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now like i said we're going to continue we have a couple more narrations actually one more narration in terms of uh, instructions from the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam of choosing a appropriate name for one's child then after that we will go to the narrations I think we have here yes the narrations from the Imams that inform us of which is or what are the best names to choose for one's children so the last of these reports is a report from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and this report is very important it says قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله كان يغير الأسماء القبيحة في الرجال والبلدان. So he says that the Imam Al Baqir عليه السلام, sorry, yeah, Imam Al Baqir عليه السلام from his forefathers says that Rasul Allah used to change al asma al qabiha, the filthy names given to the individuals around him. When he would hear a name that is considered filthy, considered unpleasant, he would tell them, no, change your name to Fulan. As well, notice here that even Al-Buldan, so the cities, 
because even cities and locations were given filthy names and unpleasant names and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would also change these names now we are entering the second portion of our discussion now which is then now what are the best names for us to choose and we did of course claim that the names of al muhammad are considered the best and most appropriate names and for that of course we have a couple narrations and we'll start with with this narration which is a narration narrated by Imam al-Baqir salam Imam al-Baqir salam says أصدق الأسماء ما سمي بالعبودية وأفضلها أسماء الأنبياء Imam al-Baqir salam he says and the best of names is the names that remind oneself or reminds others and oneself of the Lord, of God. Then he said the preferred names are the names of the prophets. What does it mean though that reminds someone of God? In another narration, one of the companions of the Imam responds to the Imam and he says to him, Ya Aba Ja'far al-Baqir, well, what do you mean by al-asma al-lati murtabata bil ubudiyya what are, what, what, what are those names that are connected to, to the Lord, to God subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says to him, name like Abdul Rahman. Name like Abdul Rahman, for example, name like Abdullah. Any name that once hearing it, a, you will feel some sort of connection that, okay, this name Abdul Rahman, a slave of the Rahman, who is the Rahman? Rahman is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdul Jabbar, for example, another example, and all these other names that we see that are common names. So basically, a name like that, that when, when the individual, especially if he, the individual, lives somewhere in the West and he hears, and a non Muslim, for example, hears the name Abdul Rahman, and then the non Muslim says to the Muslim, Well, what does Abdul Rahman mean? And then a conversation begins, and then begin, he begins to explain, Well, Abdul Rahman means slave of the Rahman. Rahman is one of the names of Allah which means the merciful and as you can see you have began a chain reaction from from just a single name you are able to open an entire discussion see that's one of the important that's one of the one of those important characteristics that a Muslim has that his name alone is able to open an entire conversation now for example imagine if you begin using the names of Al Muhammad you begin using the name, for example, of Hassan and Hussein, and somebody asks you, asks you, well, well, what is who is Hussein? Who is Hassan? A conversation begins. Or, for example, let's say somebody is named Muhassan, and then a conversation begins as well. Well, your name means Muhassan. What does Muhassan mean? He goes and he researches what Muhassan means, and he gives them the the Arabic meaning of Muhassan as well. Who is Muhassan in terms of history? Oh, Muhassan is the unborn child of Fatwa al Zahra alayhi salam, this unborn child who was killed unjustly and so on and so forth, you have opened an entire door of discussion. You have just given your friend or colleague at work or at school an entire history lesson by just pronouncing your name. Some people are intrigued, especially here in the West, you'll find that our fellow colleagues and our friends either at work, at the workplace or in the university, they are sometimes interested in these names as they call them exotic names because they are not names that are they're familiar with even though if you were to look at the statistics that we have today one of the most common name in the world I think either the, the second most common or the first most common name in the world right now is Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad Muhammad is one of the most common names in the world so imagine how much conversations but of course other than Muhammad we have to start expanding on the other names of Ali Muhammad Ali Muhammad and we'll see of course how important these names are. Now in this narration here, it says the best of names or the preferred names are the names of the Prophet or the names that have some sort of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that is true, but we have other narrations that you can say if we take this group of narrations and this group of narrations and we put them together, we'll find that the, the preferred and best names would go the names that remind oneself of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala usually are what? The names of Al Muhammad, then you'll find the names of the Prophets. And you will see that. For example, when somebody mentions the name Ali, right away 
Ali is a symbol and a sign that makes us reflect upon who Ali was. We say Ali used to be one who used to spend his nights in prayer and the days in fasting and so on and so forth. And then we start asking the question, well, who is he fasting for? Who is he praying to? And soon, like again, we've begun, we've begun a chain reaction until we have gotten to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that the Imams alayhum salam are the door in order for us to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means, in essence, that their names as well are the door for us to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We read in Ziyarat al Jami' al Kabira, for example. In Ziyarat al Jami' al Kabira, we read in one of the faqarat, in one of the excerpts of the ziyarah, it says, وَمَا أَحْلَى أَسْمَاءَكُمْ And how beautiful are your names. And it's true. The names of Hassan and Hussein and Fatima, one, one just hearing the name Hassan, hearing the name Hussein, hearing the name Fatima brings forth something to the heart. Some of that emotion that might be brought to the heart either may be sad emotion that has come forth upon the Muslim or even happiness at the same time. It's a mixed emotion. So these beautiful names serve a, a higher, you can say, uh, reason there's there's a, there's a there's a higher reason behind one calling them their children by the names of Al Muhammad other than the blessings that are attained because like we said it could have an influence on the kind of person you are it can shape the person who the, 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 that you are because once once you begin knowing okay Ali was this Hassan was like this and I wish to learn to be like my masters that will have an effect on your life it will change the way you think it will affect your morality and your ethics and make you a better person as well as the external factors which is the community around you the community will begin to ask questions especially the non-muslim community now that was another narration another i have another one another narration that that's also very just for the sake of blessing will narrate this narration it's a narration that is narrated by uh, Al Asbaq ibn Nubata an Ali ibn alayhi salam. So, a narration from Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. It says, In the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 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 So, this narration here by the Messenger of Allah, look how beautiful. It says that there is not a household that in it is the name of a prophet. So imagine in a household there is one person and his name is Adam or his name is Noah or Solomon or any of these names, any of the names of the prophets. It says there is not a household that in it is the name of a prophet except that God sends his angels to accompany them during the day and during the night. See, as you can see, there are unseen forces at play just by the just by having these names in the household it's not about the internal spiritual uplift that an individual acquires but there are external factors out there that have a great effect on just the people living in that household so imagine you live in a household with the names of muhammad and hassan and hussein and fatima and adam and abraham and so on and so forth imagine just having uh, in your room the name Hussein, for example, the name Muhammad on a tablet somewhere in the room hanging. That alone is a blessing. And from this narration, that house that has such beautiful names, the names of Al Muhammad and the names of the prophets, I tell you for now, there are unseen angels that are visiting this house day and night. Now that's for that specific genre that is concerning the names that are the best to be chosen but now I want to narrate the names that are best to be chosen from the names of Al Muhammad this one is very important especially to the new fathers and new mothers and those who have children especially who have sons in their houses Imam al-Sadiq says this imagine this is the words of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam and here Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam is telling you what they do when they are given a newborn son. He says, لا يولد لنا ولد إلا سميناه محمد فإذا مضى سبعة أيام فإن شئنا غيرنا وإلا تركنا 
The hadith says we are not blessed with a son except that we name him Muhammad. So as soon as that son enters this world, we give him the name Muhammad. Then the Imam السلام, says, and once seven days pass, we either keep his name as Muhammad or we change his name. Just giving your son the title, the name Muhammad when he is born is more than enough of a blessing. And according to this hadith that we have, after seven days, the Imam says we either change it or we either keep it. Or sometimes you can see that the Imams, for example, or even in some cultures today, you find that people give what they are called names that are connected. For example, they would call them, they call their children Muhammad Ali or Fatima Zahra or Noor Fatima and so on and so forth in order to have that extra blessing in the name. That is one narration. Another narration which is a very important narration and it's very, it's, it's difficult to take to heart and it says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man walada lahu arba'ata awlaad لم يسمي أحدهم بإسمي فقد جفاني. Whoever is granted four sons and he does not call one of them by my name has deserted me, has pushed me away. This is the words of the Prophet So be very careful that if you are given four sons by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, four blessed sons, make sure that at least one of them is Muhammad or call them all Muhammad and Ali. And you'll see why. Call them all Muhammad and Ali. Because of this narration right here. It says, Jabir ibn Zid al-Ju'fi narrates from Abu Ja'far al-Baqir alayhi salam. Abu Ja'far al-Baqir says to a man named Ibn Saghir, he says to him, what is your son's name? The man responds and he says his name is Muhammad. Then he says to him, what is his kunya? What is his title that you gave him? He said Ali. That means this man gave his child the name Muhammad Ali. Abu Ja'far alayhi salam, when he heard this, he said, you have safeguarded yourself from Satan and pushed him far away. Whenever, listen, whenever Satan hears a caller call out, oh Muhammad, oh Ali, Satan dissolves like black lead. And when he hears someone call the name of our enemies, he dances and struts with pride. So this is what I mean by choosing the appropriate name. When you choose the, choose the name, which is a name that is connected to Muhammad and Al-Muhammad, it makes Satan dissolve and makes Satan weak. You push Satan away. Whereas when you choose that name, that is connected to the enemies of Al Muhammad, you are just making Satan happy. Why would you want to please Satan? When you're pleasing Al Muhammad, in fact, you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct or no? Correct. Now, this is what we have right now, and I want to see what we have left for you. We have a couple more narrations in this, in this chapter. And which is the chapter of the naming of the children by the names of Muhammad and Ali and so on and so forth. There's a lot of narrations in this, na in, in this chapter, but our time is limited. So what we will do, inshallah, is we will go on and in our next episode, we will expand a little more. We have a couple more narrations with you and depending on time, we will either have one more episode after this or two more episodes after this, depending on the narration and how lengthy the narration is. Because I do want to discuss the name of Fatima alayhi salam, which is Al-Zahra, as we first mentioned in the beginning of our introduction. So I leave you with this and I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.